everyone. Welcome to A Godly Home. This video is going to be part of the Happy Harvest collaboration that's going on at City Girl Homestead. I will have the playlist for that in the description box. And what I'm going to be doing today is I am going to be making apple filled cookies and my grandmother on my father's side used to make apple filled cookies when I was a kid and keep them in the freezer and they were so delicious. But unfortunately, I never got her recipe and nobody had her recipe. We think it's something that she did from memory, but I do have my other great grandmother's recipe for date filled cookies and what I have done with this throughout the years is I just replace the dates with apples and it turns out delicious. Now I know this is a happy harvest video so I am using the apples but through the years using the same recipe we have made raspberry filling, blackberry filling, strawberry filling, the apple filling, raisin filling, date filling. And my husband says that you could use, he thinks, like dried cranberries to make the filling, blueberries, anything like that. You could do anything that you want with this filling. It is delicious. Okay, I have eight Macintosh apples. And I'm going to turn this burner on medium heat and we are going to get all of those peeled and diced right into that kettle. And we're back. I should have stated if you're using other fruit, you're looking for four cups of fruit or dried fruit, whatever you're using for this. Okay, to that we are going to add two thirds of a cup of water and one half of a cup of sugar. Okay, if you're using dried fruit or apples, you're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla at this point. But if you're using berries, you'll want to add a teaspoon of lemon juice instead. Okay, that's it. We are going to cook this until it's very thick. So when it gets to this point, it's kind of like at that applesauce point, but this is nowhere near right for the cookies. It needs to get much thicker but I am kind of mashing it using the back of my wooden spoon. But this will get quite thick. I'll keep showing you as we go. So this is what it looks like when it's cooked enough. It's really super thick. You can see what it looks like on the spoon. It's a richer, deeper color. So I've got two cups of packed brown sugar in this bowl. And then I have added one half a cup of shortening and one half a cup of softened butter. And I am going to cream this together. You can either use an electric mixer to cream this together or you can do it by hand. I'm doing it by hand because I think it makes a lighter, softer cookie. Okay, then to that, we're gonna add two eggs. Okay, then we're going to add one half a cup of milk with one teaspoon of baking soda in it and two teaspoons of lemon juice. Okay. 
Okay. Give that a little stir. Then to the batter, we're going to give that just a minute to set. To the batter, we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. And the recipe calls for a pinch of salt, but I do not add that. Okay, now. We're going to go ahead now and add our, this is our baking soda, milk, and lemon juice. That lemon juice creates a chemical reaction, so if you don't have the lemon juice, use cream of tartar. See what it does to the batter. It's a, between the baking soda and the lemon. It's a chemical reaction and it makes everything puff way high. Okay, now I'm going to use my new sifter. My son Jacob got me. No more squeaking. This was ju a just because gift. He come home last night. He said, Mom, close your eyes and hold out your hands. And he does that every once in a while. And when I held out my hands, he plopped that brand new sifter into my hands. I'm so excited. Okay, so we're going to start adding flour one cup at a time. I'm using the King Arthur Unbleached. How much flour this takes is going to depend on what you're using for flour. So we're just going to take it slow and you'll do the same on your end. And you're looking for the right consistency more than you're looking for actual measurements here because these cookies are very delicate and they should turn out very poofy and beautiful. Okay, there's one cup. Definitely going to need more than that. Okay, there's two cups. Okay, we're going to go ahead and add another cup. This will make three cups.
Okay, that's all I'm adding to the batter in the bowl. But let's sift a cup right out onto the table here. Okay, now we're going to start folding this flour in very gently. We're looking for this just to come together, nothing more. And you can see I'm not like packing that down hard. I'm just <laughs> barely, barely pushing it. Okay, that's still just a touch too soft. At this point, I'm not going to sift the flour because I've got my hands all in it here. Okay, that feels pretty good to me. Uh, Texture-wise, you can see how soft this is when I barely touch it, okay? Just to give you an idea texture-wise, because you can't feel it. And that's what is important, is to be able to feel it. All right, so I'm going to start patting this out. I want these fairly thick. Okay, when I cut these, I need tops to the cookies too. These are going to be partway double thick. Okay, so I have a canning jar lid and I have the top off of a toothpick container. Okay, so for every cookie I cut, I need to cut a top. One, two, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay, seventeen is all I'm going to get on the first cut. 
This is an ungreased sheet, but this has also been used for years and is pretty seasoned. If you don't have one seasoned, just very lightly grease it. Two. Okay, very, very carefully put my dough back together. Don't want to get any more flour into it than I have to. Okay, 18, 19, 3, 24. Now it doesn't look like I have much dough left here, but it's enough. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking that little bit of dough that's left over and I'm adding some flour to it and I'm kneading it until it's a consistency of pie dough because I don't want those tops to raise up too much on the cookies. I'll never get the cookies cooked all the way through. I'm rolling this out just as thin as I can because I need 24 tops and I don't want them thick. They just need to cover the filling. Okay, I'm gonna show you how we fill these. I got my 12 covers and my 12 cookies and I got another whole sheet so it's going to make 24. Now you put a good thumbprint into the middle of each one. Okay, we're going to set our oven to 375 degrees. Now I'm going to go in with my apple filling. Now less is more on these because you don't want it boiling out. You will have tons of apple filling left over. I don't know why the recipe makes so much filling. Um, you could cut that filling in half if you want. You could double the cookies if you want. For me, I'll just pop this in the freezer and then it'll be all ready. And when the holidays come, the filling is the hardest part. I'll be one step ahead. Okay, I want to stretch my top as much as possible. Work it in your fingers. I'm going to lay my top on. Then I'm going to go along with my thumb and just seal the whole outside of that, like so. Okay? On each cookie. Let's do another one closer to you. Maybe we can even make it a little bigger. Okay. I'm going to work this a little with my fingers. Make sure it's going to be pliable. I'll lay that over the filling and then I'm going to go along with finger, thumb, whatever. I'm using this finger because of being so close to the camera and I'm just going to seal that, okay, on each one and I'll be back. All ready for the oven. We're going to pop them in there eight to ten minutes. Here they are. You'll want to let them set in the pan to cool. And you'll be able to tell when they're done cooking because if you open the door and listen, you can hear them when they're still cooking. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. Make sure you check out the other Happy Harvest videos. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!